Hi, Nicole here. And as a professional photographer, I'm often asked by parents, what camera should I buy for my child? Now, as a mom to a seven-year-old, as you can see, we've gone down this road and I wanted to pass my knowledge and some deciding factors onto you so you make the best decision for your child. So here we go. So what camera is right for your child? There are so many options on the market and as a mom to a seven-year-old, I just wanted to break down kind of the cameras we have gone through and give you some pros and cons to each. But I first, before we even jump into the cameras, I wanted to give you kind of five things to consider when you're buying the camera. If you're finding that they're really getting into the editing process and maybe video, and you think they would enjoy ex exploring more of the creativity side of photography, then we need to get into a more traditional camera per se. So you want it easy to hold. You don't want attachable lenses or detachable lenses at this age, maybe in the future. You want something that's lightweight that they can hold. You also want some manual settings and some video capability, and that should cover them for this age range to really explore that photography. So how it handles, manual settings and video, no detachable lenses, and the ability to kind of zoom in and zoom out. So there's great cameras out there like this VTech for that age bracket. It kind of blurs between the lines of a camera and a toy. It's great for them to hold. If they drop it, you don't really need to worry about it. Um, and they can snap away on the camera until it's filled. You can download images and it's not eating your phone data, let's say, um, and they can kind of be playing photographer. Now, there's a lot of games built in to this camera, so that can be distracting. They're more like playing photographer and taking pictures than really learning photography, but it's a good kind of entry point. Okay. So many of you may have iPads, iPhones that your kids are using. So right out of the gate, they may be using up a lot of your data because they're just rattling off so many images. The iPhones and iPads have great filters and they can go right into editing and have fun with video. So there's a lot of creativity power with the iPhone and iPad. With the iPad, let's say, this does not have a case, but with their great cases for like impact. So if they did happen to drop, but they're really, the big screen is nice with the iPad that they can hold up and see. So that can be great for a little creative, but the data usage is something to be considered. And these are not inexpensive. So that's another piece of the puzzle. You don't want something that if they break, it's like super expensive. Um, they want to, they don't want to be worried about dropping or breaking something while they're trying to be creative at the same time. Okay. So with the iPad and the iPhone, another thing is that you're really sort of on autopilot. Now I always say the best camera you have is the one that's with you. So if I'm out with my family and I have my iPhone, I'm taking pictures with my iPhone as well. Um, but you're kind of in the autopilot, you're working on lighting and composition still with these, but um, that's kind of like where you go with the creativity and then you can go with editing and filters. Okay, all right, we do have a category I wanted to touch on before I jump into kind of the more serious camera for a little creative, um, and that is like a Polaroid. The biggest, Negative to the Polaroid, I would say, is that you're just gonna burn through so much film. If they're used to using an iPad or an iPhone and they can just rattle off image after image, 
This is not gonna last long because the film, if it's a dollar every time they take a picture and they're just randomly shooting, then you're gonna burn through a lot of film. It is fun. As you can see, it's nice and bulky. This is a wide angle one, but you see those shorter ones and all the fun colors that they love. It feels great in the hand, so that's nice. They can control the camera and have a lot of fun with it, and they love the instant gratification of the film coming out. I bought this because I thought it would be fun uh, for my seven-year-old and I to use. I also use this, um, I taught a class in a kindergarten preschool, and this was a great uh, tool to show them about, teaching them about photography. Okay, so the GoPro is another kind of fun add-on. They can take pictures with this too, but they're gonna be wide angle. Um, this has a waterproof casing so they can bring it to the beach, they can get it wet. It kind of has that level of creativity for them to explore. They could attach it to a bike or to a scooter and get into video. So it's a good like add-on if they're going down that road. Okay, so let's get into more traditional camera. You may have a point and shoot lying around in your house. And this happens, I found this one. It has a nice big screen back here. It has some manual controls. It has some good zooms. They can take video. Again, they're not using up your data. They have a memory card here and they can now download images and do editing if they wanted to. So there's a lot of good benefits to kind of getting into a more traditional camera. You're touching on those little things. The next camera I wanted to show you is the camera that my seven-year-old is actually using. It's the Canon G12 and I actually purchased this before he was even born. So this was a camera that I wanted to use for traveling overseas when I didn't want to have all my heavy gear and lenses. So at the time, this was pretty um, high megapixel camera. It's 10, so your iPhone is probably getting higher megapixels than this, but it has a lot of good features for that budding photographer. I passed this on to him when he was in like preschool, kindergarten, but he was only using it with my supervision. So, which your child will be too. Here are some of the things that I liked about it. One, it has those manual settings again. So again, he can in the future be learning more of those. Two, it has a screen in the back, but this time it can pop out and twist. So if he's taking video, so I'm just gonna turn this on. So if he's taking video or a selfie, you can see my set here, um, he can do that with this twisted um, screen or he has it on the back and he can shoot with looking at the screen or in the um, viewfinder. He can do exposure compensation, all these different higher level things when he is old enough and he wants to learn more and dive more into being creative with the actual photos. It can also, it has a hot shoe section up here. Again, future proofing for um, those items. It can zoom, but everything's compact. This is also kind of beefy versus like the slicker point and shoots. You can see how slim it is compared to some people may not like, like an adult may not like how bulky this is. But for a kid, this is great. Again, I have a strap so he knows when he has his camera on, he will have this around his neck um, to keep it safe, but it really feels good in his hand. So it doesn't have detachable lenses, which for a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old can be good because then you don't have another thing to worry about if it were to drop. Okay. So how it handles, manual settings and video, no detachable lenses, and the ability to kind of zoom in and zoom out. These are my tips as a photographer with a seven-year-old. This is 
This is the journey we have been on. You've seen all the cameras we've had and what works. I hope this was helpful. Let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions.